Hello, what's up and welcome to this channel. In today's video guys, I'm going to show you how you can make your mobile phone to a gaming console. Or should I say a retro gaming console? Yeah. And uh, the, f the things you're going to need um, is the first thing, obviously your phone. That's out of the way. The second thing, you're going to need a controller. One like this, an Xbox One controller. And maybe an Xbox 360 if you have an old one or a third party one do this, uh, that's gonna do the work as well but the important thing is that it's gonna have the Bluetooth so, uh, yeah, support uh, because you will need to connect your controller to your phone via Bluetooth connection and you will be good to go because you can use your phone as a console and not play actually with your phone you're gonna connect your phone to the TV and uh, play when you sit on your sofa what I do right now and the second thing you're gonna need is a uh, HDMI adapter for your phone, of course. So whatever USB your phone supports, you're gonna need. So my phone is a, a Huawei P20 Pro, and my phone supports a Type-C USB uh, that I have right here, uh, and you need it to HDMI. So this adapter, you're gonna, that's all you're gonna need. And uh, yeah, with anything further ado, guys, Let's hop to my PC and let me show you how you set up Ray to Arch so you can play every game that you played when you was on, on your big TV while you're sitting comfortably on your sofa and enjoying the OG games. With that all say guys, I'm gonna get tech out of here and see you in a minute. Alright, as we are on my phone right now, the first thing you're gonna do guys is to download the uh, application Ray through Arch from Play Store. So we're going to Play Store right now. We go there with write it Google Play, and I already write in Ray through Arch. I'm gonna click on it, and uh, we're gonna get to this app here, Ray through Arch, as you right see on your screen. Um, the first one, if I'm not wrong, actually let me say like that. Try the first one, if it works for your phone and you get the most out of it, go with it. But if you feel like it doesn't do the work and it's not actually does what it's supposed to, like if it's, if it's too weak and you forget like um, bad performance, then go for the Retro Arch 64. I think it's like uh, the first one is a 32 bit and the, this one is a 64 bit. So for me, it works the 64 bit. I'm gonna install it. You can go out of here. And now for the now I gonna switch from phone mode as you might see. I am phone mode right now. I'm gonna switch to desktop mode. It doesn't do any difference, but it just looks looks better for the video. <clears throat> we go in here. And uh, yeah, we're going to third party because Retroarch obviously is a third party application. It's right here. We're going to open it and it's going to greet you with those first things here. Uh, you need to grant access to read as external storage with external, yeah, what read external storage. You go on, you just click. Um, Thank you. Okay. And then it will say allow Retroarch Arch 64 to access photos, media, and other files on your device. Don't worry. Go ahead and allow. And then it's going to greet you with this screen. Now, um, this, this, the, the next thing I'm going to do is actually connect my controller to my phone by going here Bluetooth and as you know guys from my tutorials I have a PS4 controller and I have an Xbox One controller I'm gonna connect my Xbox One controller come on if it's gonna I hope the battery is under that hopefully no it's not we are connected I hope they be they're gonna be enough for this tutorial um, all right, and for the sake of the tutorial to get actually this emulator to full screen, 
if you want to do that whenever you're going to connect your phone um, to your TV and you want to play your emulator at full screen what you need to do is to go here double click like put your both fingers and click on your screen of the phone yeah and then it will pop up open it in full in full screen mode and pin to disk bar so what you want with what we want to do we're gonna actually pin it to the disk bar because why not and double click it with the both of your fingers and full screen and then just click on it again only with one finger now now because we connected our uh, a controller to um yeah to the phone as soon as you um like start to uh, click on the controller raid for arch will automatically um detect your controller and configure it so that's when uh, when you got your um retro arch ready and uh, the games when you start the games it's going to directly be configured you don't have to do anything it like that and it's really practical so what I need to do now I need to go to to this I don't know what it is what you call it but I need to go to the inputs I hope I'm right let's see am I right yep I'm right here no actually not to the inputs I need to go to the interface sorry let's go to the interface you might asking how do i do it i don't either know i'm just uh, i need to change something yeah there we go i need to change menu color theme because white it's i don't you don't see like on the phone you can actually see things but when you connect it to a big screen you actually see nothing so what i want to do for the sake of the tutorial i'm going to change only the menu color theme so that, that I can see actually what I'm doing and uh, you as well. I might talk slowly, but only for the sake of the video. I not I can't actually run through this because I am uh, done so many things with this emulator. I know what to do and what not. But for your sake, uh, in case you're not uh, familiar with this emulator or the program, so I go step by step. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually every time you're making changes to this. Uh, retro arch to retro arch let's see to the app quit quit like when you make a bunch of, of changes and they work they work for you uh, just uh, go out of retro arch like that and it will actually save the settings whenever you go outside retro arch it saves automatically this setting all right because we pin it there it's gonna it's short it's better for us we don't have to go all the menu and we back here so now let's go to the step by step how to set up retro arch so that you can play and enjoy your favorite uh, retro games so the first thing we're going to do we're going to go to online updater and uh, what you need to do i'm going to do that as well but uh, it's not important right now but i just going to tell you that update uh, update glsl shaders update overlays Update database, update cheats if you want to. I'm not going to do that. Update joypad profiles, update assets, and update core info files. Uh, content downloaders, it's only demos. Uh, you can update uh, thumbnail, uh, thumbnails updater, but you don't need that because it's only usable for uh, if you use it if you're going to use this program on a PC. But because you're using it on a mobile phone, you're not actually going to see the covers for the games that you play. So um, I'm gonna do that actually. One, two, three. Just click on it. Four, five, six, seven. Right? They're gonna download. They're gonna uh, extract, and uh, you will be just fine. Um, now what we need to do as well here, as we are here, you're gonna go to Core Updater, and here where you're gonna install actually your emulators. So the first emulator we're gonna download is gonna be the Game Boy Color one. I'm gonna go with. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you which one I use and worked fine and has some good settings that I love. Is actually the Nintendo Game Boy Color Gambit. Just one click. 
and it's going to be downloaded let's see i don't i don't see it oh there it is there it is all right then the next emulator you're gonna need to download but that's i gonna download only the emulators that i use and i recommend if there's anything else you want me to um yeah to do i gonna do let me know it's gonna be only a basic basic tutorial here for this video then for nintendo Game Boy advance guys go with uh M, uh, Nintendo Game Boy, Game Boy Advance MGBA, really good one, just click on it, nothing too special, then we go to NES, I don't use really much, we we'll have a switch so I play all the games there, oops, there it is, sometimes this happens when you update, this way I tell you every time when you um, making some changes, um, go out of the emulator and go back in so in case it crashes because sometimes it, it does i think i updated too much at once um this way so i'm gonna go back here i wonder what i think everything has updated so only the course i'm gonna check out actually the course before i do that so we have the nintendo game boy and we have the advance all right they did actually download it let's keep going hold up online updater core updater all right there we go all right we was at hold up I'm gonna go down here real quick guys or well, ladies because i don't think not only guys playing games so ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna say and as well we have we have the game boy gambit as we said the advance mgba now as i told you NES, i don't really play NES games um, for Nintendo 64, I do recommend actually uh, 64 Mom Mopen 64 Plus. Um, works for me. Has some good settings as well. Just one click, and it will be downloaded the emulator. Then when it goes to Super Nintendo, let's see like that. Do you have a good? If you have a really really recent new phone, I would recommend to go actually for. Um, where is it if i can find it i would go for nintendo snes famicom bsns mercury Acris, uh mercury, mercury balanced because you get of this you get both upwards you get like performance and uh accuracy but if your phone is really like a really um weak one i would go actually with uh, nintendo snes famicom business mercury performance uh, but for me uh, the I would and of course I recommend is the Nintendo SNES Famicom SNES Mercury Balanced. Download this one. Gonna work wonders. All right, and then the last thing I used uh, on this on the Retro Arch is the Sony PlayStation emulator. It's Sony PlayStation Beetle PCX HW has the most. Um, options and tweaks and stuff that you can make to uh, to your game so it's gonna look really like uh, at the, this time of gen so we click on that so um, the important things actually done we have all the updates we have uh, the emulators and now we're going uh, to the settings drivers uh, you can you can actually you can use uh, GL I think uh, GL is this uh, you can use GL or you can use Vulkan but Vulkan is really good otherwise you leave it as it is if I uh, um, and in case you don't know what it is you can always go go back to here where is it configuration file and then just reset to default but when you're doing that you're going to actually reset everything from scratch the settings not that what you downloaded but all the settings from scratch that means even that the color gonna actually change and i don't want that so i'm gonna actually go to drivers and uh, yeah use vulcan uh, the other things uh, don't touch don't need to do any changes 
Uh, it's not going to be really like a um, full setup guide on how to do how to set up the whole thing but it is like a basic uh, tutorial where you just can get up and playing this uh, emulator now uh, monitor index don't do anything vertical refresh rate keep it as it is estimate screen frame rate don't do anything here expect ratio here is like the the cool part now because we're going to play our games on a big screen and going to use our phone as a as a mobile retro console device um, if you're happy with like the core core provided provide a resolution of the games you know as like a Game Boy screen was small it's gonna show it's gonna show that when you start the emulators but if you want to play like you get your like a Game Boy game or Super Nintendo game at your at full screen, and then you should actually change it. You have a couple of options here, like a presets, I think. For me, because I have a 16 by 9, this is your this is the standard for today's era. Otherwise, you can go 4 by 9, 4 by 3. You can custom, um, or you can go other other stuffs. But I do recommend going 16 by 9 because I think every uh, HDMI TV those days has this resolution. It's going to work really good. So put it at 16 by 9. Custom expert ratio pros. Don't, don't change anything here. Leave it at the R. Show windows decora decorations. Keep that. Remember window position and size. Remember window size and position. Enabling this has precedence over window scale um i wouldn't i wouldn't actually um change it on here integrate scale only scales video and integrates now this if you enable this it's going to be like the the same thing as we have here it's going to be core provided so we don't want that we want to have the 16 by 9 and that means we're not going to change anything all right, and I think, uh, let's see, Cop screens, nope, and we're good here in video, audio, I don't change anything in audio actually, I keep it as it is, and it's just fine, um, input here, what I recommend is um, going to hotkeys, and scroll all down, where you can see menu toggling yeah menu to toggle sorry and uh, yeah pick a button on your controller that you don't use what do i recommend is just click the what i don't know what it's called like on nintendo 64 you know the the gyro scope thing you know i would use that just click it in click the button in on the xbox controller whatever controller you have for me, I'm gonna just for the, to do that to set up the keys. Just click whatever button you have, like the like that, and then hold the button for uh, that they say they say like hold the button that you want to use for four seconds, and you will have it. So wh why I tell you to make a hotkey for the menu toggle? It's really easy because when Hold up, because when we're gonna play our games, we're gonna have a phone connected to the big TV, right? You're gonna sit on your sofa, and uh, you. I don't think you wanna stand up every time when you wanna change your game. Um, let me let me fix the other settings, guys. I'm sorry. Let me fix the other settings, and I'm gonna explain to you why. Uh, it was on inputs. We're done with that. Latency. How GPU sync frames, set how many frames the CPU can run ahead of the GPU when using hot. Don't uh, do anything here. Um, this one you can do that if you know that your phone actually can um, perform that because you're going to lose a lot of performance. We don't want to lose performance. Um, run ahead to reduce latency. Uh, run core logic one or more frames ahead and load the states. If you, sh if you feel like you have latency with the controller, with the buttons and whatnot, then enable it. But if you don't have, then leave it like it is. Don't change anything. Run ahead, use second intense. Add the same here. 
try it first out if you have any input lag if not don't change anything on those settings in the way as well configuration as i told you in the beginning of the video save configuration on exit so whenever you exit your um rate to arch it's going to save your settings um savings here you actually have to do only enable two, two things and i love on this emulator is auto load stat and auto save stat and what they do um, is they automatically save like your game from the point where you play it so you don't have actually to save save your game but do it anyway save your game uh, as you normally would do in the in the in the in the game but like for example we say you played mario like right on your game boy and you're like okay i'm tired of that i want to change to nintendo 64 you go out of it you go out of it you go to mario 64 then when you go back and play uh, from 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 that like from n64 to game boy you will be you will be right back there it's gonna load the game right there where you actually left so i think i explained exactly what those options do and uh, this is why i do recommend to keep them on frame throttle um maximum speed i think to exit context frame rate using freezing uh this one from core request timing used to your refresh rate screen g sync screen. i don't know about that but experiment with it try it out enable it see what's going to happen for me it's uh, did nothing too great it's actually slowed my games so i wouldn't do anything here but as i said for more detailed video on this Retro Arch uh, program, let me know. I'm gonna make a video on that. Now here, now I'm gonna explain to you why I, why we made the hotkey for the menu toggle. Because when you're gonna play on a full screen, on a big TV, um, when you're gonna start the game, um, the, 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 the buttons that when you play on your phone gonna show off, like the, the, the layout for like the, um, the buttons for the control going to show on your phone screen and when you connect your phone to your TV it's going to show on your TV screen because you don't want that because you use a controller we're going to disable display overlay on your screen and because you don't have a display on your screen on your phone you cannot change the games so this is why we have the menu uh, we did the hotkey for the menu toggle so I hope now you know why it makes sense i think all right uh, don't change anything else uh, just uh, disable display overlay it is like this but you just disable it and you're good to go not the on-screen notification don't change anything user interface here where i did go in and did go into appearance and here where you can change the color theme and other things but that's up to you it's all a tasting Show advanced setting, yes, keep uh, put it on. Menu widgets and whatnot, uh, keep them at the R. And if you want, you can keep um, your programs running in the background. And if you don't want, you can keep it like that. I don't write, I don't like to run my programs in the background, so I keep it like that. On screen display, uh, interface with it. Power management, guys, sustain performance mode. Uh, put it on it's going to give you more horsepower achievements it's up to you if you want to put if you want to make a count and so you whenever you play a game and maybe you clear it and you make something fancy in the game you will be rig straight you will get some achievements it's like steam but uh, doesn't care too much about that here when you're going to play online with others uh, playlist this is up to you as well how you want to uh, have it but keep it that is it's better user that as well you can change here the language privacy you can make your account you can use the you can put your username like you like in a 3ds and the last and not least is here when you can see your system bios the downloads and whatnot and in case like you download some example you download some course and course are the emulators on this program that you don't want and you experiment with them and you want to delete them let's see like that the only way to do that you have to go to the folder where they are stored and there you have to delete them 
if you do that then you can they're gonna disappear if not I'm gonna make a video about that as well with all that we have all the um, complicated stuff out of the way now let's go to actually search for our games so for search for your games you have to go to the second one that looks like a window in the middle and we have two options we have scan the directory and scan file now what we want to do we are gonna scan directory so we scan scan for all our games and if we want to scan only for a certain game then you go for scan file but we want to go and scan for all games that we have on the phone so you go on scan directory you go wherever you have restored to your games I have them there and as you might see here but don't go to the folder just go to scan this directory and he's gonna scan automatically every ROM that you have but keep in mind to have them on uh, compressed they don't, if, if, the, if the ROMs are compressed it's not gonna hit them so decompress them and put them on the folder put a name on it and if did all if doing right you should have now more options as you might see Nintendo Game Boy Color Nintendo Game Boy Nintendo 64 Nintendo Super Nintendo Internet System PlayStation and uh, yeah now when you go into Nintendo Game Boy Color you will see I have those two games and this is correctly right I have Pokemon Trading Guard game OSI Australia and I have Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX but there are some sometimes guys uh, it is like that um, the program doesn't pick up all the games as an example I have more Super Nintendo games than just Donkey Kong Country but for some reason it doesn't pick up and with this if this thing happens I have a solution for you it has to do something with the uh, different RAMs and whatnot but I'm gonna check this out and see if I can find a better solution but in case this thing happens don't you worry like as an example you have other games other Super Nintendo games or like PlayStation I don't know what you and this don't show up right here don't worry you just go to load core you you take this is for me you go for your Super Nintendo Famicom there we go um, and then you go to load content you go wherever you have restored your games or here you go down mine are here emulator games folder and I go for I named every every folder that for games so I don't have to search for them Super Nintendo games and as you might see the only game that had pick up was Donkey Kong Country I have still Legend of Zelda links uh, link to the past so Mario World and so my world 2 so let's say you want to play Legend of Zelda uh, a link to the past you just click on it and it's gonna start like that and as you might see it's full screen it's beautiful it sounds great it looks great I don't feel like you need to do anything it looks beautiful it sounds beautiful everything works you see no de no delay you see can you hear like I click the button it moves uh, directly um, let's put our name actually really quick link classically nothing too crazy um just for the sake of the video guys where is the k oh, i'm glad i don't see k link and uh, we're good to go look it's flu it's it's function closely it's fast it doesn't lag <clears throat> i just gonna show you then what you're gonna do just to if i can get just uh, rid of this i'm gonna just show you how good it looks outside as well the rain and whatnot and uh, that awakes some as no nostalgia in me actually played my favorite games on the tv his father is going all right there we go you see we work just fine there we go now we're going to take this and as i said i didn't configure any control it does it automatically there we go rain storms perfect and now keep in mind that we have re, uh, we have we have the hotkey for the toggle the menu 
you have always to remember where it is click on it and you're back at the menu but now when you're back at the menu you have some extras as you might see you have now shaders cheats controls latency you can check it out here as well and here you have options where you can change a lot of things to enhance more the game than it already is but as i said that's going to be another video and if you might see <clears throat> Whenever you run a game, there are going to be a quickly access all event in game settings, a quick menu. When you click on the quick menu, you can resume your game. And then when you click again to the, the hotkey for the menu, you're going to back at the menu. And uh, let's see, I play this, you're playing this game right now and you're like tired of it. You want to change to Game Boy, right? You click the hotkey for the menu. Then you're going to close the content. Always close the content. Um, click uh, the button to go back you will figure out which button it is and uh, of course this game uh, is is not it's not in the Super Nintendo right let's see I'm gonna show you this as well see it's not here so my solution for that was you go to load recent uh, you click on it and then you just add it to favorites that's the only solution right now till I find out why it's not adding the games. And now if you go to favorites here, where the other games are, right? Here. It's the Nintendo, it's a uh, link. And if you click on it, you just you can run it and play it. And uh, yeah, this is the only solution right now. And as I told you, now as example, I, I toggle from the menu, I want to play something else. Um, I go Game Boy, oh no, hold up. I'm gonna go Nintendo 64 actually. Um, if you have many of those, you just can remove them. Just click on them, but don't run them, remove, click again, remove, and you're good to go. And as I said, we are tired of um, playing Super Nintendo and you want to change to something else. As I said in the video, we're going to go for Nintendo 64 and we're going to play The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And I'm going to start and it's going to just start perfectly this time because I change it to GL, the graphic driver, instead of Vulkan. Um, there we go. And uh, of course, if you press on the menu toggle, you can change a lot here when you go down to options. And as you might see, uh, dynamic compi compiler, poor, high L, LL, you can change the 4x3 resolution, you can change the 16x9 re resolution. I'm gonna go actually to um, 1080, 1920 by 1080, uh, expect ratio, we're going to keep it like that, I don't know what adjusted is, but don't play with those settings, keep it as it is, those other things going to be for another video as I said, but I'm going to just try um, those settings right now and see what's going to happen actually, if you're going to get, if it's going to look actually nicer, yeah, I think the audio is perfect and it's, it's working just fine. Just gonna show you as well. Uh, legend, yeah. I just want to write the legend of something. <laughs> um, Link as always. I never go with my real name because I feel it's not. It's not supposed to be even. Um, they want you actually. All right, looking not bad. Could look better, but as I told you. I have to make some um, adjustments and whatnot, and it's gonna look uh, actually great. Yeah, that was uh, a kind of time, but as I said, those other settings, the fine tuning, is gonna be for another video, guys. Um, gonna exit out of here and uh, close the content. And now to the last, actually, emul oh, sorry, you have to go back. The last emulator. Now here I have I leave it like I leave it as it is as a purpose. The Sony PlayStation. Let's say you want to play Digimon World, and you have everything. It's going to tell you firmware is missing. SCP Arch five five zero two bin, and those are the those are the BIOS for the PlayStation. Of course, Emo, it's illegal. How are we gonna get them? Hey, come on. Google is your best friend, but hold up, your boy got you. Um, I got them actually on my phone. 
So I gonna um, close and I'm gonna show you where you have to put them actually because that is one of the video as well. So we're gonna quit retro arch here. We're gonna go. You go to your files on your phone. You go to my uh, internal storage. And we gonna. Can I use the phone? Yeah, okay, I can use the controller. Is this not cool? You're gonna go to downloads, wherever you have downloaded the file, and you're gonna need all those here, all those six files. You're gonna need SCP-7001-5502, as it was in the video, 5500-101 and 7502-5501. and I'm gonna have those in the link in the description below where you can download them. Um, actually, you need only one of them. It depends on what region of game you want to play, but if you are going to play other games from other regions as Japan and whatnot, because it's region locked, you need all of them. So you're going to mark them like I did right now. And we're going to copy. We go to internal storage. Then from there you take the files till you hit, till you find retroarch and you go down. And put them in the system folder, not where uh, Muppen64 Plus is, just in the system folder, like that. Oh, hold up, we have to de. Uh, there you go, passed. Not inside the folder, outside. Only inside the system folder, but not inside the Muppen64 Plus. With this done, you actually good to go when it goes to the PlayStation. Um, PlayStation. Uh, Emulator. Now we're going back to RetroArch again, and now when we have when we start um, the PlayStation and the game, it should work. There we go. Never let me down. I don't know now if it sounds good or not, but it's all tweaks that has to be done, so it's going to be working just fine. I hope the sound is okay. I don't see any lag from my from my side, but I cannot hear it. Right? It works just fine. And it sounds just fine. Perfect. There you go, guys. Look how, how beautiful it looks. And keep in mind, you can, as always, you can tweak this thing as well. It's, you can make it so beautiful. You can uh, push the MSSAs. You can push the native resolution. I'm going to do this now. Internal GPU resolution to 2. And uh, look, the diff you're going to see the difference, actually, when I do that. Look at now. I'm gonna take away the. All right, it's it's all old, old shiz and whatnot. But if you go to the actual game, it looks beautiful, and uh, that's what's up. Anyways, there are retro games. That was all from me on uh, Retro Arch, guys. I hope the video helped you out. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if yes, leave a like, uh, leave a comment, let me know. And uh, with that all said, guys, I'm gonna get the heck out of here. Have yourself a good day and barbados, keep it cool and stay awesome. Um, my name is Emo from Emo, Game, Emo, Emo Gaming and uh, yeah, if you want, as I said, the next video is going to be I'm more detailed on the settings and what to tweak to get them the most out of it. And I'm going to show you now how the, how the games look on my big TV as well. Peace.